So in this part of the course, we focus on multivariate hypothesis testing. The learning targets are to explain and apply and apply the Hotelings T square test and explain and apply manoeuvre and permutational ANOVA, so uh, MANOVA, so PERMANOVA. Here you have the study questions related to the learning targets. Here an overview of the course contents. We will first discuss the multivariate two sample test and then we will proceed to the multivariate analysis of variance, MANOVA. And PERMANOVA is provided with a separate video and set of slides that have been created by Eduard Search. So multivariate comparison of two groups to understand what we are doing, we return to the univariate case of ordinate and the comparison of the central tendency of two groups. You see, we see here an example where you have measured the kappa content in two soils a couple of times. And the question is whether the kappa content in the soils is significant, significantly different. You see the null hypothesis is that our that our mu, which indicates the true mean, um, is the same as the mu of the soil B. So this is one of the examples where you use the t-test. And we've already discussed this in the univariate part of the course. Now in the multivariate case, we have also two, two samples and we want to compare them concerning K responses. So let's say we have two groups, not two samples, of course, we have two groups and we compare them regarding these um, K responses. So for example, you would have the copper and iron content of soils measured several times. And our hypothesis is that the soils are the same regarding these two response variables, or you could have several more response variables, but just two groups. And this can be done with the hoteling t square test. Why should we use a hoteling t square test? Well, you could also test individually the iron and copper content between two, two soil types, but note that the results for a series of t tests are not necessarily identical to the results of the hoteling t square test. And also, if you do multiple testing, you have to account for multiple testing um, be, um, in terms of the alpha error because otherwise you have an inflation of the alpha error and you don't need to do this for the multivariate case. So how is this done technically? To understand that we have a look back at the formula for the t-test. So what we basically do in the t-test is we calculate the difference of the means. So the means is x1 and x2. That's the estimated sample means because we don't know the true mu of the data and divide them by the standard error of the difference. Um, we've, we've already discussed this in the course, so I don't go into details here. Now let's look at the formula for the Hortelings T-square test. And what becomes apparent that there are a lot of similarities to the univariate case. Here 
you have the difference of the mean vectors given here x1 minus x2 and you have the inverse of the covariance matrix sloppily saying we could interpret this as dividing by the standard error of difference so the covariance matrix also contains information on the variances and covariances of the data set and scales these difference of the mean vectors through this covariance matrix so squaring of the t statistic from the t-test yields a statistic that is very similar to the t-square test statistic. What are the assumptions of the Hotelings t-square test and of Mano? And these assumptions actually also hold for MANOVA, so we don't need to list them a second time. First of all, independence of observations. We've already discussed this issue for a couple of times. You have the multi-rate normal distribution of the dependent variables within each group. That could be done by visual checking. We have discussed already how you can check for the multi-rate normal distribution in earlier parts of this course. And you have the homogeneity of covariance matrices, uh, homoscedasticity within each group. So these assumptions are all very similar to the assumptions of the univariate t-test or the univariate ANOVA. So the homogeneity of covariance matrices can be checked with a hypothesis test. This is a multivariate generalization of Levine's test of homogeneity of variances. And you will see in the R script how this works out. It's based on a permutational, permutational approach. And it is, re it is relatively robust to deviations from multivariate normality. The you can generally check all assumptions also visually, but it is a bit cumbersome in the multivariate case. You will see what I mean in the R script. Nevertheless, this visual, visual checking is in, in forms on culinarity and therefore should be done as well. Now let's turn to the multivariate ANOVA, so, so the MANOVA, and to understand the background of this we start again with the univariate case, that's the comparison of the central tendency of, of, more, of two or more groups with respect to one variable. So in this case we have measured a couple of times the copper content in different soils and the question is or well, I know I know hypothesis is that the copper copper concentrations are the same in all soils, or more abstract that the mu a, mu b, and so on, and until mu e are the same. And we have discussed more background of this in the in the context of the univariate part of the course. Now in the multivariate case we compare the central tendency of more than two groups but with respect to, to more than k variables. So response variables. So we have not just the copper content but here again we have copper and iron content of the soils and we have the null hypothesis that the mean vectors are the same and this can be tested using the MANOVA. The computation of ANOVA and MANOVA is very similar. Note that the results of a MANOVA and of several univariate ANOVAs can be different. This is mainly because variables can have a collinearity structure. You know how to check for collinearity and we've just discussed this in the context of the assumption. 
if there is no correlation, the results of the MANOVA equal those obtained from multiple on ANOVAs, except for the fact that we have error inflation when you do multiple testing. If you have correlations, the relationship between power and correlation between dependent variables is uh, can be very complex and you see some more information on how the power is affected in the notes to this to this slide and I refer you to read these notes to the slide for more information. So in the two group case that should be mentioned as well, the results for the MANOVA is the same as for the Hoteling T square test. An example where a MANOVA has been used is, is given here. So this is from a study where diatom diatom community and artificial stream channels have been exposed to nutrients and different light treatments and grazers and the question is to which extent the the different the different communities or the community has responded so you see a manova that has been done for 13 for the for the whole community for 13 taxa overall and different levels of nutrients grazers and light and so on have been tested and with that you could identify for the whole community whether you see an overall effect of the nutrients and the other treatments The MANOVA has generally multiple test statistics. So four test statistics are listed on this slide that are mostly that are more or less calculated by most of the statistical software. So you have the Wix Lambda that is most popular but has a relatively or has a lower power in most cases. Then you have pillar is trace that is relatively robust to deviations from the test assumptions. So um, when you don't have a when you don't have a no fully multivariate normal distribution or some deviations or, or, or some differences in the covariance structure between groups, as long as the design is balanced, then pillar is trace should be your test statistic used. It is standard in R and it has the highest power except for collinearity um, if there is high collinearity. If you have la high collinearity between variables then Roy's largest root is the most powerful test statistic um, especially if all group means differ in one direction and if the assumptions are met. It's the strongest influenced by the heterogeneity of covariance matrices, the Roy's largest root. And finally, you have the hotling law lay trace statistic, and this can be converted to the hotling t square testing as most efficient for two groups. So you should carefully check what is what are the characteristics of the data and then select one of the test statistics. So in general you are good with good to go with pillar trace but if you have high collinearity and the assumptions are met then you might want to go for Roy's largest root. So, so how serious is violation of test assumptions. That is um, uh, a question we've already discussed briefly that this depends partly of course on the test statistics and in general we, we, you can say that MANOVA is relatively robust to deviations from the test statistics. And for example 
there has been some uh, analysis of of the effects of deviation from the from the assumptions and that included in the most situations the parametric manova is most powerful and does not is not strongly affected by deviations pillar trace uh, can be used as long as it's approximately balanced the design that means that the largest sample size is smaller smaller equal than 1.5 times the, sm the the sample size of the smallest group and then the, then even if the test assumptions such as heterogeneity of covariance matrices are that the covariance matrices are similar is violated then this has minor influence so you find some more details on what happens if this is not the case if the sample sizes are pretty unequal how this affects the test statistics then finally we have to contend that the ecological that for ecological data the assumptions are usually not met so that should come to no surprise for you because we've discussed extensively in in previous parts of the course that we but we have for count data or abundance data that we rarely have a normal distribution and if we have different groups well we might have differences in the homogeneity of the covariance structure so what you sh should you do if the assumptions are not met well, you could either turn to non-parametric or robust MANOVA. We also show you how to do this in the R script. You can do um, an RD, we can use an RDA for MANOVA that is based on permutations. It's, it's more robust to deviations of the assumption from multivariate normality and you can use um, multivariate GLM for non-normally distributed data for example if you have by Poisson and binomial data we suggest to read the related paper by David Wharton and colleagues they uh, on distant based multivariate analysis um, confound location dispersion effects and methods in ecology and in evolution that introduced the multivariate GLMs and they are also incorporated in R but we don't go into more details in this direction. We will also provide you with information on the non-parametric manoeuvre that's the permutational per, the per manoeuvre uh, in the course materials so have a look at that as well. And with that, we end this part on multi-rate hypothesis testing.